Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I am extremely excited because in the video today, I'm gonna to be unboxing and talking about this incredible new makeup from Grant Stone Shoes. This is gonna be the Grant Stone Field Boot. So let's open her up and see what we got on the inside. So as always, as soon as you open up the Grant Stone lid, you're hit with a wonderful aroma of the boots on the inside. The unboxing experience is always next level with Grant Stone. They include this awesome Grant Stone shoehorn slash bottle opener. They also included a separate set of laces here. Very nice. I really love their waxed cotton laces in this tan color. I have another set on my brass boots in, in Essex. So it says, thank you for purchasing a pair of Grant Stone footwear as well as a nice little card, a laminated card, showing the Grant Stone Ottawa boot in natural Minerva. Absolutely outstanding. As always, incredible, incredible flannel boot bags included to protect your boots during shipment as well as during travel. I use their boot bags all the time. They ha I have a lot of Grant Stone boot bags on the wall behind me. And here it is. Wow, can you believe it? These are unreal. So this is the Grant Stone Field Boot in Saddle Tan Battle Assy. Now this is, when I heard that Grant Stone was running this model, I was just so excited. So it's gonna be very similar to the Brass Boot in Saddle Tan Veg Battle Assy, but I'll be doing a quick comparison between the two in this video. But real quick, let's unbox both boots yeah these are just both absolutely unreal this is a makeup made in heaven right here this is an adventurer's boot unlike any other ever made <laughs> so following my recent sizing strategy with grant stone i actually do like the fit when we're doing the floyd last i like going down the full size from Brannock and up a width i find that it just sort of fits my foot just a little bit more, more bespoke. That's not to say that the eight and a half D doesn't fit me well, they fit me very well. I still love the fit on those. I found that going down another half and up a width seems to be a better move for my foot type. Um, again, I'm a nine Brannock and going a half down's good, going the full down I find seems to work a little bit better. And so let's read a little bit about the field boot. So the field boot pattern is dedicated to the long weekends spent outdoors. It has the feel of a vintage leather hunting boot, utilizing stout leathers and the time-tested Goodyear welt construction. Most importantly, leather components are used throughout the boot to create the foundation to withstand years of wear. The shaft is slightly taller than our average boot, but the unlined shaft construction and padded collar offer a soft feel from the first wear. While the pattern and robust materials create a strong base, the key is the full fitting Floyd last. It prioritizes forefoot freedom, which is crucial for an all day comfort. The field boot is designed for walking, working, and long weekend adventures. This vegetable tan leather is created in one of Italy's boutique tanneries specializing in the process. The leather is placed in a botali, a large barrel that rotates, allowing the organic tanning substances to stay in contact with the article. A complete cycle may take 30 to 35 days. This tough leather has the scent of an old saddle room and the squeak of your favorite tooling leather. So it's Goodyear Welt Construction, built on the Floyd Last, Carlo Badalassi Vegetable Tan Minerva Leather, full grain leather cow lining from Milwaukee. So it's got brass eyelets and D-rings as opposed to speed hooks. The D-rings are new for Grant Stone. Vegetable Tan Leather Insole, Welt, and Midsole, Cork Filler with Steel Shank, full grain leather heel counters, EVA wedge sole for a soft strike and year round wearability. And yeah, so they offer this boot in four different leathers, including Walnut Bison, this saddle tan here, the field boot in Earth, as well as Dark Burgundy Kudu. So the Earth is from Charles F. Stead, it's in a water resistant wax suede. I believe it's a waxy commander. The dark burgundy kudu, it's a Charles F. Stead kudu leather, which will have a little bit more stretch to it, most likely. Very forgiving uppers there. And yeah, so let's analyze the differences between the field boot and the brass boot in a similar, 
in the same leather. This brass boot has had a very decent amount of wear on it. You can see it's got a good patina going on. This is in literally the same leather as the field boot here. You can see that the field boot is a little bit lighter. The brass boot darkened up with a little wear. I believe this brass boot started out the same exact sort of orange color as the field boot, though it's faded into more of a more of a Red Wing Oro legacy looking leather. Um, hasn't changed the whole ton, but I still I still do notice that it has changed. It's got really formed really nice ripples along the quarter here. Really nice creasing along the vamp here. Absolutely beautiful. I have not treated these. I did throw in some laces from Guarded Goods, some rawhide laces that I felt complemented the upper very nicely. We've got a hand stitched mock here. 360 degree Goodyear welted. It's also on this wedge sole. This used to say Grant Stone on it, though I walked on it so much it no longer does. So here's what that looks like <laughs> when it's brand new. And then let's do a quick size comparisons. So this brass boot is eight and a half D. This field boot is eight E. As you can see, the length, the eight and a half is just like a millimeter longer tops it's not much longer at all. Wyatt's father, Randy, told me about this sizing strategy. You know, if they sold out of your size and the D width, you can go down another half size and go up a width and they basically fit the same. Because sizing comes down to volume more than dimensions than anything else. There you go. Do those look like different sizes? Because they don't, they don't really feel all that different on the foot. The only difference is, is it brings the ball, which is the widest part of the boot, brings it down just a little bit. The ball shifted shifts from like up here to like here so it's kind of hard to see so the length will go will increase just a little bit as you go up in width so the 8d will be just a little shorter than the 8e as you go up to an e it increases in length just a little bit but the heel of the ball stays the same from 8d to 8e so that part doesn't shift it's the length will shift but that's for cosmetic reasons. One thing that's different between the brass boot and the field boot is the brass boot has a, a clean one piece vamp here. And what I mean by that is this vamp, this is a mock toe model, but the apron and the vamp are all one piece. This is all one piece of leather. This is essentially a plain toe. And what they did is they hand stitched. And so you get this protruding layer of leather that sort of pops up. It's elevated slightly over the rest of the vamp on the toe box here. And so yeah, so this vamp is all one piece of leather. Whereas on the field boot, it's not. By my eye actually, there's a lot going on with the field boot. So with the field boot, we have the apron and this apron extends to this edge right here. This edge here is where the apron extends to. And then the apron is stitched to what looks like the base vamp. So we have one panel here, it starts here in the quarter at the at the back heel state starts here in the quarter extends forward and then we have another a third layer here so actually this vamp is comprised of three different pieces of leather they're all beautifully artfully stitched together this outer piece of the vamp here that's going to provide protection from wear and tear so this is another added layer of protection something that the standard brass boot does not have and what this reminds me of actually is this concept of having additional panels built in to the boot for added padding and protection i first saw with the thoroughgood roofer boot so this is my thoroughgood roofer boot in desert sand and as you can see here it's got this outer panel here that you can actually wear through because it's got another panel here. So there's two layers of leather here, the outer panel and then this inner panel. And this outer panel is designed for when you're roofing, you scrape your foot against the roof, against those shingles, eventually you're gonna start wearing through this. Well, that's okay because you have this extra layer here as well as here. And so that's what they're also doing on the field boot. This is essentially a reinforcement layer. So it's going to start here in the quarter it's going to extend all the way and it's going to come up in a really cool stylistic manner it's going to come up and it's going to intersect with the apron right here you're getting a lot of extra reinforcements with this boot this is a true adventure boot this is a boot that you can literally try to destroy and good luck because it's just got so much reinforcement built into it so this outer vamp panel here is going to be double stitched all along 
it's gonna intersect here with the apron. The apron is also double stitched, hand stitched. This is another thing that I have never seen Grant Stone do, but I always applauded them on their derby shoes, how they had like a cross right here as reinforcement connecting the quarter to the vamp. Here they have sort of an hourglass stitch to really reinforce the this eyelet panel to the vamp. Adding more reinforcement, we have a rivet right here. I've never seen Grant Stone install a rivet in any of their boots. That is really cool. That's really something brand new that I've just never seen before is a rivet. Also, something that the Thoroughgood Roofer boot has. The Thoroughgood Roofer has one, two, three rivets here, four rivets there, same on the other side. Four brass rivets for protection. So that's just a tiny little bit of extra protection here on the, on the field boot. So we've got one rivet here, one rivet here. Wow, incredible. So we've got five standard eyelets and two D-ring hooks at the top. The D-rings are really cool because those are going to allow some movability compared to the speed hooks on the brass boot. The D-rings, they're a lot more maneuverable. D-rings are a component I really trust because they move, but they're also very solid, very sturdy, very reliable. I build D-rings into my own bags just because I love how they look and I love how they function. They're perfect for straps. They'd also be perfect for laces in this application. The other thing that I'll point out here is the padded collar. I love padded collars. I've really grown to admire them and enjoy them. I have uh, a padded collar on my recent pair of Thursday boots, my Thursday Explorer boots, basically their version of the combat boot, as well as I have a pair of Red Wing work boots that also have a padded collar back here. It's very comfortable, very nice, especially if you're doing a lot of hiking, gives you a lot of cushion, a lot of support. It's definitely something you want if you're out doing long hikes and are working in these and or doing adventure. And then probably one of the nicest, most coolest surprise touches that I did not foresee them doing was this five stitched little piece back here on the back heel stay. So this is also a new design for Grant Stone. So typically on their back heel stays, it's just a simple back heel stay sort of hourglass shaped. It's got a nice smooth curvature and then it stops at the top. They stitch in the back heel support into the boot, double stitch that in. It looks like a cosmetic stitch, but it actually does hold a structured support back there. Not sure what it is. I don't think it's leather stiffener. I think it's, I think it's an actual back heel support structure that they build into it, but they build it into the field boot as well. This stitching here is really attractive. I, I really like that. I believe that also serves a cosmetic purpose, but it also may serve the purpose of reinforcing the back heel block structure that keeps the heel nice and firm and protected and holds it in place. And as I was looking at the soles, I thought, oh, were the brass boot built on a different sole? No, it's just that these brass boots sort of wore down from all the times I wore it. And so the tread on these brass boots have sort of smoothed out compared to what they look like when they're brand new. So. And real quick before we close out the video, I just wanted to give a brief update to say that I took these boots on a rather strenuous hike and they performed absolutely wonderfully. They got some really cool nicks and scratches along the way and they definitely hold up to the name field boot. They are perfect adventure boots, perfect outdoor boots. They do really well in the wilderness, really well on the rocks. They're super lightweight, really easy to hike in for long distances, very supportive, very comfortable. I entrusted my life to these things and they did not disappoint. That'll do it for now. Please leave me your thoughts about the new Grantstone field boot in the comments below. I want to hear the audience feedback on this one. I'm really very excited about this boot. This, this looks like a boot that I would take camping with me, honestly. It would be a great all day wearing boot for comfort, going out fishing, hiking, hunting, whatever you're doing outdoors, starting a fire, singing Kumbaya around a campfire. That's where I see this boot at home in, you know, flannels around a lake, that whole type of setup. I could totally see these boots thriving in. They could definitely take the abuse. I've put all my grant stones through the ringer and they definitely handle the abuse <laughs> and whatever I throw at them. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching guys. I will leave links to the incredible new field boot 
in the description below. Go check those out if you're interested. You can follow me on Instagram. My username is aerosurferlv. I also have an online shop now, dalesleatherworks.com, where I sell cuffs, kill tees. I make custom bags as well. So if you're interested in any of that, check out dalesleatherworks.com. And anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will see you all in my next video.